Hi guys, it's Anz Britannia. I hope you are all having a great weekend. Today, we are going to be continuing our ant farm building series. In our previous videos, we have seen the creation of a tropical formicarium, which actually ended up housing our amazing jumping ants. We also showcased a tutorial on how to build a plaster formicarium. This is now called home by our new big-headed ant colony. And I would just like to say thank you to you guys for sending us your creations. Here we can see a plaster nest created by Liam from Ants Life UK, who has gone for an electric green look on one of our plaster nests. As always, if you decide to follow one of our formicarium building tutorials, be sure to email us your results. But in today's episode, we will be building an ant nest out of Whitehall. And as always, everything I bought will be in the description below. So if you guys decide that you want to precisely follow this tutorial, you can. So what is Whitehall? Well, it is known differently around the world. It may have a different name depending on where you buy it, such as aerated brick, AAC, Hebel, or Aircrete. In my case, for example, I bought this as aerated brick. But this material is perfect for housing ants, as it has great mould resistance and is easily carved into. So, for this first step, we're going to be using a triangle metric ruler, an A5 piece of glass which is used for photos, a ruler and a pencil. So, firstly, I want you guys to unwrap your A5 glass sheet. Once you have done this, I would like you to pick out the backboard that comes with the glass. We will be using this as a template to start with, as we want to refrain from scratching or damaging the glass. Now, I would like you to place the backboard on the brick as shown. Next, to make sure the glass is centered, you will need to make sure there is a three centimeter gap between the edge of the backboard and the edge of the brick. Be sure to mark off where you have finally placed your backboard. And finally, draw around your backboard. Now, you need to add some grid lines, which are essential. Next, you will need to add an additional line to the side without an edge. Once again, making it three centimeters wide. So, having drawn on all of our grid lines, we now need to remove this extra piece of useless brick. I would actually recommend saving the cutoff piece just in case you wanted to create an additional nest in the future. Before we cut off the excessive brick, we need to draw guidelines for our cut. The triangular metric ruler definitely comes in handy, as it will help keep all the guidelines at the correct angles. Now it is time to saw off our excessive brick. For this, I will be using a jigsaw. If you don't have a jigsaw, you can use a standard wood saw. I just find these to be a lot more accurate. If your jigsaw blade, like mine, is too short, you will need to cut on the top and the bottom of the brick. So, that is all the sawing done. Now, it's time to create the tunnels and to let your imagination go crazy. But be sure to include some space if you intend on including a sponge filtration area. Here I am seen adding not one but two sponge filtration areas and I am marking it out with pen. This actually helps me when carving out my tunnels to see in detail the outline. So as you can see here 
I have gone for a very basic layout and I've got four small chambers and two larger chambers. I also created a kind of semicircle chamber where I'll place the tube plug. And I have successfully created the sponge filtration chambers where later on I'll be placing our sponge inside. Now it's time to carve out our tunnels. Now for this demonstration I will be using a Dremel multi-tool but you guys at home can use a chisel and a hammer and then steadily carving out your chambers perhaps with a screwdriver or a flathead. To start with I have added on an attachment to the Dremel which is uh, covered in sandpaper and is pointed. This will hopefully make it quite easy to penetrate through the first layer of aerated concrete. Now if you guys want to get your hands on a Dremel because I think they are amazing tools the uh, you can get one for as cheap as £40 in the UK so I recommend that you guys use a hoover or a vacuum to hoover up any dust while you are carving away so you can accurately see how you are progressing. Now that I have carved out the kind of foundations of the tunnels and chambers, I'm going to use this other Dremel attachment to deepen the chambers. So far so good. Now I would like to make these chambers slightly deeper than the tunnels. This will give it a better and naturalistic feel and will be better for your ants as if they wish to block themselves off into a chamber for some reason, it will be made easier as the tunnels will be narrower. So guys, the next step is to now smooth down our aerated concrete. So to do this, I recommend you get a small kind of flat piece of wood like I'm demonstrating here and laying some sandpaper on top of the wood and then rubbing down in a circular motion over the aerated concrete. This will gradually flatten the whole surface area. Now, in terms of putting our glass onto our aerated concrete, we need to use magnets. Using the Dremel now, I will demonstrate how we will use magnets to keep our glass in place. By using these magnets, the glass stays sturdy onto the aerated concrete and we are keeping the nest chemical free by refraining to use glue and silicon. But if you guys wish, you can glue the magnets into the drilled holes, but be sure to double check whether the glue is non-toxic, as most will be to your ants. Or, if you can't get your hands on any magnets, you can still drill the holes, but you can fill the holes up with blue tack. So, when you've filled the holes up with blue tack, you can stick the glass firmly down onto the aerated concrete and the blue tack will hold it in place. Right, so now it is time to drill our holes for our white tube plugs. I have accurately measured here a three centimeter distance between the top of the brick and where we intend to drill the hole. Oh. 
after your hole is drilled, guys, you will then be required to hammer the white plug down into the hole. Now, you have to be very careful when hammering this in as this material sometimes can be quite brittle. So I just recommend doing some gentle tapping and in the end the plug will sit firmly into the aerated concrete. Now you just have to repeat the same process in terms of drilling but with the actual chamber. These white tube plugs are actually amazing. They sit so firmly into the aerated concrete, it is very unlikely that they would ever come out. Also, it is so easy just to fit on some tubing and not have it come loose or come out. Right, so the next step is to drill some holes so you can squeeze a pipette through the aerated concrete into the watering chambers to water your sponge which will then hydrate your nest for your ants. After drilling, sanding and carving out our nest, it's always good to give it a brush. Here I'm just seen using a small attachment for the Dremel but you can use just a standard bristle brush. Right then guys, now it's time to paint. Uh, this is one of my favorite uh, parts of making a nest. I absolutely love painting. So for this, we're going to use some matte acrylic paint, which is a kind of cyan color. Now, I recommend when painting your nest, you only use water-based paint and be sure to check before you buy whether it is a toxic paint. Most water-based paints won't be, but oil paints are. So please avoid oil paints as they are not just toxic to ants, but are toxic to the environment. After you've finished painting to uh, the standard that you like, it is always great, I find, to leave the paint to dry for 48 hours. So guys, after 48 hours, our nest is pretty much finished. All you need to do is add in your sponges, add your magnets and your glass, and your nest is ready for your ants. In terms of hydrating the nest, you simply will put a pipette of water through our holes that we drilled earlier and you will squeeze the water into the sponge and the sponge will hydrate the nest. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to build a Waitong ant farm. If you are enjoying my content, be sure to hit that subscribe button to join the colony and be sure to leave a like to let me know if you enjoyed this video. But other than that guys, I hope you have a fantastic weekend and I will be seeing you in the next one.